In this video, I'm going to walk through how to get the things you need for class uh, on a Mac computer. So the first thing we're going to do is remove any existing versions of Java. Then we're going to uh, install four things. There's uh, Graphiz, there's code for the class. Uh, we're going to install Java itself, and then we're going to install Eclipse. Um, so the first thing is just to remove any existing versions of Java from your computer. Uh, there's a couple of ways to do this on the Mac. You could do it in the terminal or using the Finder. So I'll use, do this using the Finder. Um, so what I'm going to do is go to the Finder. And in the Finder, I'm going to go to the Go menu item. And I'm going to go to a folder. And what I'm going to select is slash library slash Java slash Java virtual machines. And I'll go there. Um, if you don't want to do it all in one uh, go, you can just go to uh, slash. And mm -hmm. from there, you can get to library, um, then the Java than Java Virtual Machines. If you see a folder here, if you see 20 folders here, if you see 100 folders here, just delete them all. Um, so it'll ask you to give you a password. I'm just going to delete um, all my Java Virtual Machines. So now Java's gone. If you go and try to run Java, it won't work. Everything will be sad and bad. Um, OK, so once you've done that, then uh, we'll go to the next step, which is to install Graphiz. Installing Graphiz on a Mac uh, actually requires the use of the terminal. So if you've never used the terminal before, um, I'm going to show you how to do that. So I uh, use Spotlight to uh, start programs. There's many other things you could do, but I'm just going to go to Spotlight and type in Terminal. Um, and when I fire up the terminal, I will get a prompt you know similar to this so this is um, yours may look different but it, it doesn't matter you, you've got some sort of uh, place where you can type and there are things you can do here you can look at um, folders you can change directories um, you can do you know different things but uh, this is a udix command prompt what i'm going to do is uh, install homebrew so homebrew is um, available here and what you want to do is just sort of copy this line of text and then go to the terminal and paste that line of text, then hit return. And um, it will uh, do these things. So what you're going to do is press return. Um, Homebrew will eventually prompt you for a password. Uh, and you type that in and everything will be fine. I've already installed um, Homebrew, so it, it's not prompting me as much as it may prompt you. OK, so once we've got Homebrew installed, um, what we're going to do is type in these two things here, brew update and brew install graphics. So I'll just type in uh, brew update, and uh, brew install graphics. Um, Note that the response you get will be different. Uh, in particular, the first time you run brew update, it goes and it fetches a bunch of stuff. Um, likewise, I've already uh, installed Graphiz several times, so it's sitting there on my machine, whereas you'll have to go, it'll fetch it, and then bring it to your machine, and then install it. Um, but once you've got it there, um, you're fine. And um, the command, I think, is called dot. So if you run dot, you'll get, oh, it just hangs up. So I'm going to hit Control c um, to get out of there. But anyway, that's the command, and it's working. Everything is just fine. We're not actually going to run uh, Graphiz from the command line. We'll instead be using it from uh, Eclipse. So uh, for now, I can quit the terminal and um, go back to installing software. So we're, next thing is we're going to install the code for class. Um, and so what I'm going to do is download uh, this zip file. Um, I've already downloaded that to my downloads folder. And uh, on my machine, when I download a zip file, it automatically unzips it for me. 
Um, so here it created for me this um, folder called Eclipse Workspace. You may have an enclosing folder. If you do, uh, throw it away, get rid of it. Um, but this is the thing you want, and you want to take it, you know, wherever on the machine where you like to keep um, your coursework. Um, you can put this in a folder anywhere you like. It doesn't matter where it goes. Um, I'll just leave it in the downloads here um, because it's, um, it's sufficient for me. Um, so inside, if you look inside of this folder, you'll see it has a algs4 folder. If you look inside of that, it has a whole bunch of other folders. Okay, so I'm going to go back. So this is my downloads. I have my Eclipse workspace. Okay, so now that I've got that, we'll go to the next step, which is to install Java. So to install Java, we can install it either from Amazon or from Adopt OpenJDK. We are going to install from Amazon. Um, as it turns out, I, I tried to install with OpenJDK today, and there was a little bug in 11.6 uh, or 11.06. So um, I'm going to prefer Amazon. Um, but in general, you can use either. They're both implementations of the um, Java Development Toolkit, and you, you can use any long-term support release. So. Uh, Amazon only has long-term support releases, so in this case it's uh, Java 11, but you want to take whatever the latest uh, long-term support release is, um, so it may be different if this is, um, uh, the, in the, if you're seeing this in the future. Anyway, take um, the most recent version, and what you're going to do is uh, scroll down and find this for macOS. This is the most recent long-term support release. So this is number 11. Um, so you can download this as a package uh, file. And I've already done that. So I'll just go over here and run the installer. And the installer should work fairly quickly. Let's see. And yeah, we're done. OK, so I'll trash that. And now um, the next step is going to be to install uh, Eclipse. So we'll go to the Eclipse download page. We'll download it here, taking the most recent version, whatever it is, and uh, hit the download button. And again, I've already done this, so um, you've got the download file here. In this case, it's a disk image. So you're going to open the disk image, and you'll have within it uh, an installer, which you then um, can select. Once the installer um, comes up, you'll have options here. Um, we're going to select the first option, which is to install the Eclipse IDE for Java developers. So we'll select that. Um, and you can see here um, that there's two options. One of them is which Java virtual machine do we want to use? Um, and you should see here the Java virtual machine that you just installed. So in this case, it's Java 11. And I want to uh, use that Java machine that I just installed. Um, the other thing is which folder the application should be written to. And I don't know why, but um, the default on macOS is not great. Uh, we'd really like to install this in the applications folder. So what I'm going to do is go here and um, select um, applications. This is the applications folder on my machine and um, slash applications. This is the one I want. You can also put it in a, any other directory you care to, but um, this is the normal place to put these sorts of things on Windows. Um, and then, sorry, on, on Mac OS. We'll just run the installer. Once the installer is done, you can launch Eclipse. When Eclipse starts, it will prompt you for a workspace. And um, you should select the workspace that we downloaded earlier. So uh, in my case, I saved it in my download folder. So what I'm going to do is uh, browse to my download folder. And then I'm going to select that workspace. It, it's very important that you select the workspace, um, not anything within it or above it. So it, don't select algs4, don't select source, don't select any of these things. It's very important that we select the Eclipse workspace. Okay, so I'm going to use that. 
as my space. When Eclipse starts, it will give you a splash screen. If you want to see this in the future, you can say, please always show it to me. Um, but we're just going to click it away. And what we can do as well is um, the Eclipse interface is quite complex. Uh, we don't need all of it. So I'm just going to click away a few things that we're not going to be using in our class. So the outline, I can get rid of that. Um, the task list, I can get rid of that. And um, what we're going to do is to create a Java project. Now this should all work out great um, as long as you have the correct workspace. If um, the process that I'm about to go through doesn't work for you, it's probably because you're not in the right workspace. You must have already downloaded the code from class. And what we're going to do is use that workspace that we downloaded. Um, so if you got it wrong and you're in the wrong place, then Eclipse, you want to go to File and you want to go to Switch Workspace. Um, if you say um, Other, you can go back and you can search for the right workspace. So make sure you're in the Eclipse workspace that you downloaded. All right, what I'm going to do here is create a Java project. And I am going to use the name ALGS4. And you see when I actually finish this name, um, the wizard here uh, completes all the options and also notifies me that it's going to automatically configure the Java runtime uh, engine and the project layout based on the existing source. Okay, so if you're not getting this message, it is probably because you're in the wrong workspace. So you need to go back as I showed you and switch the workspace around. So, uh, but as long as this looks okay, you should see also that it's using the same Java uh, runtime environment that we had selected. So that's again, uh, Java 11. And so we're now gonna finish then. Um, so at this point, Eclipse is going to prompt you to create a module in Java. We are not going to be using modules this quarter, and it's important that you do not create one of these uh, because it will confuse your uh, code base. So what we're going to do is say we're not going to create one, so do not create that. And um, what you'll notice then is that we have a um, package here with algs4 in it. And if you open up, you'll see um, we have some uh, warnings. So if you look here, there's a problem window. It's telling us we have 70 uh, warnings. These warnings are to be expected because um, the code I've given you does have some unnecessary uh, elements, which are useful for teaching. But we don't want to see these warnings. So what I'm going to have you do is to disable two warnings in the Eclipse system. So we're going to go to Preferences. Uh, Java, Compiler, Errors and Warnings. And what I'm going to do is scroll down to Unnecessary Code. And we're just going to change two of these. Value of local variable not used. We're going to ignore that. And an unused private member. We're going to ignore that as well. So once we've ignored both of these things, um, the system will recompile and you can see that we have no problems. Yay, no problems. Um, the homework we're going to be working with is going to be in this little package. So you can see there's um, five or six packages here starting with algs1. These are from the first chapter of the textbook. And then there's uh, several starting with two, which are from the second chapter of the textbook, which we'll be talking about later. Uh, for now, I'm just going to open up algs1.1 and look at um, the hello program. I'll be lecturing about this program uh, later. So here is um, hello, and um, this program is uh, here. I can edit it, and um, for example, here I'll just delete the first letter of this word. And you can see when I do this, I get a, um, uh, a problem. So here uh, the problem is in red, um, if I save the file, the problem will actually show up down here. So I just save the file. Um, you can do that by going to File, Save, <coughs> or just simply Command S. So when I save the thing, you can see it here. And uh, what I've done here is something bad. Um, I just misspelled something. 
And you can see Eclipse will attempt to give you fixes um, with the limited intelligence that it has. And those fixes aren't necessarily very good. So in this case, you can see um, none of these fixes really uh, will reverse the, the error that I just introduced. So what I'm going to do is uh, type in the capital S, and now that will um, sort of solve this problem. Note that the, it's still showing down here because I haven't saved the file. Um, rather than save it directly, what I'm going to do is hit the Run button here. So this is the Run button. This will run the code. Um, note that it's going to prompt me here to say, hey, this file hasn't been saved. Do you want to save it? Um, you always want to do this, so I, I suggest you check this box. Um, so you always have the most recent version of your code running. Um, and then we're going to say OK and run. Um, note that a new window has popped up on the bottom, a new tab. It's called the console, and this is where the program can print things. Um, so there it's printed out hello. Um, we can you know, edit this program all we want. If we want to say um, hello world, um, I can then run that. And you can see here it's just going to run. OK, so uh, basics of Eclipse then are just here's a file. You can edit the file here by just typing as you would expect. Um, and then to run the program, we run it over here. All right, so we'll see you in the next uh, video for more about uh, Java programming.